Now, welcome to you. It's lovely to see you. You, when you started this, it's been going a long time now, and it's, yeah. it's hugely successful. But you didn't think it would be. Why would well, that? It's series seven now, and I think uh, you know TV moves so quickly these days. And yeah. you start something off, and you think, how long is it really going to last for? Yeah. And then, you know, here we are, series seven. Yeah. Which is fantastic. And in series seven, uh, it, so it's finally happened. This is the, this. There is one of the designs that is has become your favourite. Yeah, I mean, there's a guy called Ruben who is one of the most brilliant but eccentric guys I think I've ever met. He was actually in series, I think it was in series three, he turned an old railway carriage into his permanent house. Yeah. And then he called us up and he said, actually, I've got another project because just around the corner on our piece of land, there's an old sewage treatment plant. I mean, you've got to think, draw the line somewhere. Surely you can't change yeah. that into something. Yeah, I'm in a building that's been created to process... Yeah. Mm, yeah. Something we won't mention. No, you don't want to sleep there. You can't imagine <laughs> sleeping in that. But you know what? He's turned it in the most fantastic space. It's brilliant. It's a kind of homework study space and a chill out space. And it, honestly, it's one of the most beautiful spaces that I'd ever seen. And this series, uh, your your challenge, your own challenge, uh, it was something quite magical, actually. Yeah, can you remember the kind of. Um, there was a kind of toy tree house in the early 1980s. I know exactly. Just with the, the green, it yeah. obviously is green. You just kind of push the side. Yes, that's I it. That's it. This. Yeah, and you push the top button and the whole thing popped up and it had a slide on there. And one of the coolest bits was um, inside the tree trunk, there was a little lift and you used to turn yeah, a little yeah, wheel yeah. on the side and the lift would go up. I had one of these. Well, my sister of had one of them. Of course you did. <laughs> she would never let me play with it. So this has basically recreated one of my childhood passions of wanting to play with that tree house. So we've built a life size. And it's like it's got a, it's got a slide. It's and similar it... to that. It's got some slides. It's got netting. You'll can have to you see go it at up the and end. Can you? Is there a tap? We've got a staircase and a ladder that does that. It's not quite the windy lift, so we've had to tweak a few things to make it structurally That's work. What What I are the, the common that. trends now? What do you find people doing with their spaces? I mean, I think the main thing is people are looking at creating small spaces in a really inventive way. I think because property prices have become so expensive, mm. obviously it's something smaller, it's generally cheaper, but I think you're looking to do things that are more multifunctional to make every inch of yeah. that space work. So multifunctional furniture is quite a key one. You know, can we have a piece of furniture that does a number of different things in the same space? Mm. So maybe one room, could feel like there was a number of different rooms. So a study could become a dining room, for example. Well, you are the expert on small spaces. Uh, one of our viewers, Chrissy, got in touch. Thanks, Chrissy. She says, I hate this space. I've got a picture uh, here uh, in our bedroom, <laughs> but I've no idea how to make it practical. I was thinking about a book corner, but I'm not sure. Any ideas? I mean, it's literally a corner. That is one of the most brilliant images I think I've <laughs> ever seen. I mean, I've done some small spaces before. Have I got to turn a laundry basket into a house or something? Yeah, I think, I think, I think you might have like. to. Now, I think, I mean, on a space like that, it would be great for something like bookshelving or integrated storage but what you've got to be careful when you do anything in a corner space especially when it's near the edge of her bed yeah is if you do bookshelving you don't want to bash into it so you tend to kind of chamfer the corners or, or put a curve on the corners and make it feel like it's more organic and blends into the corner oh the i see so it's not just a hard edge not too hard edged otherwise if you whack against it it hurts yes okay there you go chrissy what about um what about you i mean i'm assuming that your house uh, is you know the, the perfect use of space um, is it perfect? I, it's one of those things that at the design stage, mm. I spend a huge amount of time making sure you get the balance of the spaces right and the flow of the space right. Quite often, I mean, in my house, it's open plan on the ground floor, so we've got kitchen, dining, living as one open space. And if you mm. don't get the balance of those spaces right, mm. it tends to fall apart and not mm. work. I, I love what you've, in, in the, the most horrific of circumstances, what, you, what you've done for the, the, the kids of the Grenfell Tower disaster. I mean, that, your house was so close that, yeah, but, you know, yeah, it was... It is. It was... I'm, I'm probably about, I don't know, about 80 metres away from the tower. Yeah. Mm. I, mean, I was there a... that night, which is... Horrifying, never horrifying night. Like no, I bet. And the, the local school, uh, the, they lost four pupils in that in that horrible fire and uh, and so they've temporarily rehoused the school and you went over there and you spoke to the kids about design yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I mean the, the, there's a kind of new academy school that was built alongside Grenfell and that's why Grenfell Tower was refurbished so it looked like it was part of a whole new development um, obviously that school's been completely closed and they built a new school, brand new school, they've built it in a car park near Wormwood Scrubs and moved all the kids there into a temporary school until until um, the school reopens. 
And so I was invited along to have a chat with the kids, which was amazing, actually. You know, it was a really positive day, to mm. be honest with you. And it was nice to talk about home and home design. And uh, we got them designing some garden pavilions and building stuff all afternoon, which was fantastic, to be honest with you. And there's a, obviously, it's, it's the most awful thing that's ever happened in, in my lifetime when it comes to homes and housing. Mm. Um, but hopefully some great things will come out of it. You mm. know, I think these kids will come out stronger. Well, hopefully you'll visit there. That'll spark Inspire a small them, mind and yeah. they'll think, right, that's it, we're, we're, we want to get into design. Yeah, and, and you know, I think there's going to, after the inquiry, I think there's going to be all sorts of discussions about how we deal with housing and social housing, how we build affordable housing, how we maintain it and mm -hmm. really look after it. And I think if in some small way those kids can make a difference to what's being built on Absolutely. our doorstep in the yeah. future, it'd be fantastic, actually.